you're back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hope in crisis. So、um, we're really happy that we actually got some feedback and comments on our first two episodes.、Mm. Uh huh. Okay, we we got some really interesting feedback. Okay.、Uh, first of all, Ya Wen wants to know why do you why does Shang hate insurance so much? Oh. <laughs> and this can be、um, associated with the other comment left by Wei Ru, Jia Rong, and Wei Li. They said that insurance is meant to be good. Um, insurance is a way, a protective mechanism,、mm-hmm. to make sure that your life is not affected by、mm-hmm. accident. So it's actually a way for you to feel more reassured. So what do you think? Okay. Well, there's a saying in English, something like, "Don't、um, hate the player, hate the game." Uh huh. Okay. And so,、uh, in the case of insurance.、Um, I try not to criticize individual insurance companies or individual people inside insurance companies、okay. because I think it's very easy to、um, to be inside an institution, and so it's the financial system. It's the f- it's it's the environment around it.、Uh-huh. It's the regulation that has been captured、mm-hmm. um, by a few parties that has.、Um, That has corrupted these institutions. So, like insurance, it's about risk management. It、right. solves a real need. Uh-huh. Uh huh. The problem that I have with insurance is that well, why are there no innovations going on in insurance? And why, when、uh, the economy goes bad, why do the insurance companies not have to do their job, which is pick up the bill, right?、Good、Instead,、point. taxpayers do. Uh huh. Yeah. So, like AIG got bailed out.、Uh, I bet that all of these. Insurance companies that were on the hook in the U.S. for COVID nineteen,、mm-hmm. I bet they're not going to have to pay. Oh, yeah. Okay. So that's my problem with insurance is、uh-huh. the、um, the game. So the way that government and insurance have gotten together, so that they can't fail.、Mm. Yeah. What kind of innovation do you think people can come up with?、Uh, There was a friend of mine that was starting a company in Australia,、uh-huh. and he wanted to bring it to the U.S., but he could not bring it to the U.S. But it was essentially like real-time insurance. So you're getting on an airplane, and you want to buy insurance before you get on the airplane、uh-huh. for the airplane, and that's it. And he wanted to price that, so he's like, "Look, I'll sell you insurance for your next flight for fifteen dollars, fifteen Australian dollars. Do、uh-huh. you want it?" And to me, that's really interesting. That's a totally different model, you know. the The model you have right now is you're locked in. You pay some number of dollars each month for a full year, for many years. You can't get your money back. It's the whole thing is locked into this super long term system. And then this guy says, "Hey, I'm just going to insure events in real time." But that's called travel insurance. We have it in Taiwan.、Um, to a certain degree. So he wanted to do this for everything,、oh, for all kinds of events,、okay. in real time, and.、Uh, You know, just like、um, when Uber first started to getting, you know, people to be able to use their cars to、uh-huh. drive other people around, the taxis blocked that.、Right. Or when Airbnb tried to to let people make money from their homes,、it. yeah, they blocked that too.、Uh-huh. And so now, I mean, the current state of Uber and the current state of Airbnb is not so good. So don't. Don't、okay. get me wrong. It's not、uh-huh. like I think Airbnb is the greatest thing on earth and Uber is the greatest thing on earth. But the fact that it was so difficult for them to get started,、mm-hmm. um, the fact that I don't even know of anybody except this one guy that's even thought about doing insurance in a different way. These are all the signals of something is kind of wrong. Oh, okay. Yeah, but the, I guess the one that I'm the most negative on is when.、Um, A business cannot fail.、Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's really bad. Yeah. I mean, as a business owner, you're supposed to take account for your risks. Right.、Uh-huh. Yeah. I mean, I've had my business fail. You, you've done a number of startups. I'm sure some of、yes. those have failed. <laughs> right. And and you suffer because of that. Yeah. But that's that's life. Like that's what like live and learn. Like、uh-huh. that's that's how what makes you strong. Right. Right. Yeah. So why is it that I'm、If、not asking anyone to cover up for right? me. Right.、Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. And and why is it that certain businesses 
get the cover and other businesses don't. Mm -hmm. Like I'm like, I believe in justice. Like the rules should be the same for everyone. Mm -hmm. Not like, okay, the closer you are to the government, the better your rules are. The further away you are from the money, the less you get. Like mm -hmm. those are not, that's not justice. Mm -hmm. As long as the rules are fair, as long as it's an open playing field, I'm, I'm all for those kind of rules. Like I think insurance it, it should be part of an ecosystem of all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. It's just they have special rules, and that's why I don't like it. I was watching Shoshana Zuboff's interview the other day, mm. and then she's talking about um, the situation that our economy is in right now. And then she said that people tend to think that the economic sphere is different. Uh, is separate mm -hmm. from the political sphere, but actually they are not. Mm. So whoever controls money, the economic sphere can have political influences too. So I think that's what's happening right now with the insurance industry. Yeah. And also that's what's going on with surveillance capitalists and um, social media companies, which we're going yeah. to talk about later. Yeah. Mm. I think just before we get started, so Hearing the comments is always really great. I, uh -huh. I love getting that kind of feedback. Um, one of the things that I'm thinking about is, so obviously I'm from the West, you're from the East, uh -huh. and we're, you know. Colliding. Colliding, <laughs> yeah. And um, I remember my first experience in Japan, uh, I went into a noodle shop uh -huh. and people were eating the noodles. And when With they finished the noodles. a lot of noise. Exactly. <laughs> Like crazy noise. And I'm just like, cause when was that? When I first came, like, so th this was my okay. first trip to Asia. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. this was a long time ago. you didn't do it now. Yeah, right. not as much, right? Right, right, right. Yeah, and um, I just remember like my head was exploding because from, a, <laughs> from the youngest age, like my mom would yell at me uh, if I'm making noises with my food. Yeah, slurping, food. yeah. Yeah, she's like, that's completely bad manners. Uh -huh. And um, I think there's, lots of differences in the way that the West looks at things and the East looks at things. Uh -huh. And you can't say which one is better. Right. They're just different. And that's not our goal here. We're not comparing them. Yeah, what I hope we can do is to contrast them, to uh -huh. bring them up and to sort of, uh, like I'm very critical on America mm -hmm. because I want America to be better, mm -hmm. right? And um, uh, I, I hope that people can ask more questions and try to think what would allow, I mean, Taiwan and America are similar in that we're both democracies. Um, I believe that what made us great was in some ways we were kind of like, like pirates, probably the wrong word, but like um, America was started by a bunch of radicals that left uh -huh, that uh -huh. Yeah. traveled by sea, right. came to a new place, okay. right? And so I think like there's, there's a lot of interesting um, history uh -huh. uh, of Taiwan that relates to pirates that my I've heard about. Is, my grandma is half Dutch. Oh, So wow. I do have pirate DNA. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, there was even really interesting Chinese pirates. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that is kind of hidden from history. Right, yeah. right. Uh -huh. I forgot her name. There was a woman, she was a pirate, and she was like, Oh, what was her name? She was the most fearsome pirate. Like, I think she had 70,000 ships under her control. She was Chinese. Oh, really? Oh. Yeah. oh. Incredible story. Like, next time I'll have to look it up and okay. share the details. All right. So I agree with you that we're not comparing the U.S. system with, yeah. um, to or with the Taiwan system. Yeah. And I think that um, what I'm hoping through this podcast is to – raise awareness so people would know what are the flaws of each system mm. and what are the benefits or advantages. Mm. And then together, we are Earthians. I mean, that's right. That's in the that's next right. decade, we may be talking about, we, we, maybe in 10 years or 20 years, we no longer talk about international exchanges. We're talking yeah. about interplanetary exchanges. We're talking about how Martians are dealing go. with Earthians. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I'm really excited that my son will be traveling to Mars one day. Yes. I'm very confident about it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so um, we got two more comments about um, health care versus sick care. Okay. Wang Zhiyuan said that um, for old people who are confined to bed, um, their health conditions can actually be reversed. Mm. 
Uh-huh. And then Aaron said that Taiwan's government has been trying to reduce repetitive and ineffective remedies. Mm. I think these are really good causes, um, but in my experience, they are not very common yet. At least I didn't receive any information like this from hospitals or or our community system. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think. Um, How does it make you feel about your grandma? Like any any new thoughts <laughs> since last time? <laughs> I'm trying not to be too dark. Here. Yeah. I didn't see that coming. Okay. Um, <laughs> um, I would say that uh, in her last year, she wasn't very happy. Mm. Mm. And I don't see any point extending her unhappiness. I mean, it would be great if she can become healthier and also happier. Yeah. Yeah. But we're just trying to keep her alive. And we're keeping her alive and unhappily. Yeah. So um, I think it requires the commitment of uh, caregivers, family caregivers or professional caregivers to reverse these people's health conditions. And I think it's great. I think uh, the reason why I talked about my grandma is because I read a report on um, life expectancy okay. in Taiwan and in Nordic countries. So in Taiwan, the expected life span is 83 to 85 years old. Years? Oh, that's a lot. Years, I mean years. Yeah. That's and then, better in the U.S., a lot better. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. What is the number? Uh, I think it was like 76 and 79, okay. but it's hovered around that for a long time. Okay. We, yeah, it's not getting better. It's getting worse, actually. Yeah, so... How do you define what's better and what's worse? Because from that research, a lot of people are spending seven years or more in hospitals or mm. on bed. So mm. that's 10% of their life spent in hospitals or on hospital beds. Yeah. But, but then in Nordic country, um, from the report that I read, um, Dying people, <laughs> I'm not yeah. sure that if yeah. that's the right term. Yeah. So dying people only spend two weeks mm. in that dying stage. Yeah. So they were healthy, and then they became old, and then they used those two weeks to get ready yeah. for the final chapter of cool. their life. Yeah. yeah. I'd like to die surfing a wave, and then, like, that's it. <laughs> I'm done. Like... You know, ninety something, and I have I'm to still say surfing, that's a little bit done. too romantic. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to spoil your ambition, but yeah, I don't want any time in bed at all. I I, I want to just be dying, okay. doing what I love. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That's great. We can we can work <laughs> on that. I mean, that's a that's a great ideal. Yeah. So, um, again, I want to thank them for leaving the comments. Mm, yeah. uh, well, first of all, thank you so much for finishing the show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you for bearing with us <laughs> and, then, yeah. and then giving us very constructive feedback. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And please let us know, like, are there anything interesting about the differences of, say, America and Taiwan that mm-hmm. you would like us to go into deeper? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I know a lot of people, a lot of my friends are Taiwanese uh-huh. spending five to ten years in the United States. Uh-huh. So, yeah, um, please tell us. Be very cool. Yeah. yeah. Your, your experiences yeah. in different parts of the world. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we're going to talk about fake news and misinformation. Cool. And um, at the root of the discussion, we're going to talk about social media and why you hate yeah. social media. You bet, sure. <laughs> to begin with, I'd like to share, I'd like to clarify for our audience some misinformation. Okay. So first of all, eating sea lettuce or injecting disinfectant won't prevent you from getting COVID-19. <laughs> And then holding your breath for 10 seconds is not a test for COVID-19. And the Russian president did not release 500 lions in Moscow to persuade people to stay indoors as part of his efforts to fight the pandemic. (laughs) That one is hilarious, right? But people actually believe that. Do you know my dad asked, well, so my dad told me that that previous one about holding your breath. Like Uh if if you hold your breath, 
So what he said is if you hold your breath for, I think it was 15 seconds, uh-huh. doesn't matter. And um, if, if when you, you know, you, you release Released. that you feel like a shortage of breath, like something's wrong, okay, then you have COVID. Like, that's what he said, too. So this is, like, totally urban legend And he's now. educated. Oh, absolutely. I mean, he's, he's a lawyer. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how dangerous is this? I mean. Not as dangerous as drinking bleach, which is what my president said we should do, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, he suggested injection. Injection. He's, yeah, he's that's like, right. That's drink. right. He, he's, he was asking for something more straightforward. Yeah. 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 So um, the rapid global spread of COVID-19 has been accompanied by what the WHO has described as a massive infodemic. Okay. So there's a pandemic. An infodemic. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Have you heard? Oh, so you just shared one from your dad. Yeah. So did you correct him? Well, actually, I didn't even know. I mean, Uh, I, I, I had to go read a bunch. Like... Some of this stuff is extremely hard uh-huh. to... To tell if it's true? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I mean, um, well, some of my friends, they said that, like, Taiwan has line groups. You can talk about this, I'm sure, right? Yeah. Where they help people to combat disinformation. Chat lots. Okay. So there is nothing like this that I know of in the West. Oh, okay. Yeah. See, that's something really innovative about Taiwan. Well, actually, let me... Reverse that for a second. So there was a project in 1994 called um, Snopes, uh-huh. which was by this guy, um, David, I forgot his last name. But he was um, in the Internet in the early days, and people would just have like, hey, can you check this fact? Like, is this true or not? And he developed um, – him and his wife did this. They came up with a website that got quite popular that would just do fact checking. Oh, cool. But not specific for, say, COVID uh-huh. and – they definitely can't keep up with social media. Uh huh. Yeah. Nineteen ninety four. Yeah. What was I doing in nineteen ninety four? So that was very forward thinking. That's that's very visionary. Well, fact checking. I mean, so first off, fake news goes back a long time. Uh huh. Um, I mean, at least a hundred years. Okay. I mean, I I mean, the honest answer is that the moment that uh, people had access to the printing press, that they were printing Gutenberg, things. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, Martin Luther essentially was doing fake news to the, well, I mean, to the perspective of the priests and the religious people, Uh Martin Luther was all fake news. Like, this is not the word of God. This is, you know, in the language of the common people, pushing this out to everyone. Uh Uh So that was a long time ago. Yeah. So fake news is really just, I mean, there's, there's two types of fake news. One is Fake news is something that you don't agree with. Uh-huh. Okay, and, and right, right. That was what I was thinking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the other kind of fake news is like actually disinformation. Uh-huh. And so I think like um, maybe today we talk more about the disinformation uh-huh. and this infodemic thing you just mentioned. Yeah. Yeah, because, I mean, um, my president, anything that he disagrees with is fake news. <laughs> Some of it is fake news. It's true. But just because you disagree with it doesn't make it fake. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but uh, someone should build a chatbot on Twitter, or or oh, it's tell me about maybe it. not a chatbot, some kind of bot, to tell people that hey, this is fake news, and well, you should stop spreading it. The Russians built bots on top of Twitter. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Lots of bots. Yeah, <laughs> and they they are creating and spreading fake news. Well, it's because, um, in many ways, to the the problem is that. These social networks and social media has um, optimized itself for spreading negative news, Mm -hmm. um, things that look kind of funny, um, things that gives you shock. Yeah. Right. And so um, trying to combat that, hey, no, injecting bleach is not going to like keep you from getting COVID disease. So that's that's really hard to do. Are, are you saying that clarifications don't get more shares? Yeah, there's there's this. Um, but I like to outsmart people. So. Yeah, no, there's there's this fourth law of thermodynamics. Uh. <laughs> like, um, uh, it takes um, uh, an order of magnitude more energy uh-huh. to override bullshit than it does to create it. Oh. Okay, so like you can propagate something. Uh-huh. Um, you know, the joke here is there's really only three laws of thermodynamics. So the, the fourth law is that 
to spread a lie, to spread a rumor, to spread bullshit takes like this much energy. Uh And then to go combat that, to counteract that takes like order of magnitude more energy. And that's really true. Like it is so difficult to like, like, where did my dad hear this 15 seconds hold your breath uh-huh. and then you're fine. Like, uh-huh. where did he hear this? I have no idea. Uh-huh. Like, if that was true, you wouldn't need to do any testing at all whatsoever. <laughs> you would just be like, okay, I gotta go, you know, <laughs> quarantine myself, right? right? So like, like, how did he hear that? Where did it come from? And he, oh, he read it on Facebook. W- read it from whom? Ah, one of his friends. Uh-huh. So it's like, it's so hard to overpower that. Right. How do you even do it? Well, I don't know about other people. I enjoy outsmarting other people. So when, <laughs> so when I see a piece of fake news uh-huh. or misinformation, I enjoy the pride in getting to prove other people wrong. Oh, you should have gone and worked for that Snopes guy in the beginning. <laughs> because most people... Yeah. 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 But is this, is this unique oh, to you? Okay. Or like, do you think Taiwan is really good at this for some reason? Oh, okay. We can talk about it later. Yeah. But I think one thing that Taiwan did mm-hmm. um, really, really well is that we make real news entertaining. Okay. Uh huh. So right now, government agencies are hiring people like cartoonists or animators to create interesting memes. Oh, that's cool. Uh huh. To spread real news, huh. correct information. Huh. So that is a way to. Um, that, that is a way to balance the power. Mm. Uh-huh. If you make real information very funny. And yeah, I think because like you just have to understand the way people get information mm-hmm. now, mm-hmm. right? And the change from, let's say, traditional media to social media is like traditional media, um, I would believe it if, say, CNN said it. Uh, not that I would believe <laughs> CNN, but like... <laughs> Hypothetically speaking, yeah. What? <laughs> so, um, social media, it's like I believe Fox it. Fox has what CNN has. So. Yeah, like, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, 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 um, so I traditional know, media. I know what was, you're saying. They have curators, so they yeah. have they have journalists and then editors and then chief editors. So, yeah. so they have a structure to verify. Supposedly, they're they used to. Yeah, I think it's all been destroyed. Right. But originally, like. You would you would say that like how do you like how do you trust a piece of information? Well, it came from uh, an institution that's a trusted authority. Mm-hmm. And then when you switch to social media, you're like, well, how do you believe this? Well, you believe it because your friend shared it with you. Yeah, everyone is a publisher, so. They're... Well, I think the dangerous part is that it's your friends that you believe. I mean, I don't know about you, but like, my friends got me in a lot of trouble when I was in high school. <laughs> <laughs> like what? <laughs> Yeah. So, um, but like what makes them an expert on, um, public health or, you know, so my dad got that bit of news first Uh from his brother Uh and his brother, I mean, ran a computer company and his other brother was a military uh, helicopter pilot. Neither of them have any qualifications as an epidemiologist. So like, why, why are they even spreading this news? Well, it's because I want to share it with my brother or I want to share it with my friends or like it's, that's the way things spread. That's our next question. So okay. intention. Yeah. What, what, what are the intentions of producing or spreading fake news? Ooh. I mean, take your dad and yeah. your uncles, for example. Yeah. I don't think they have any bad intention of misleading mm. people, right? Military helicopter pilots? Yeah. And they're really educated. So yeah. when I was asked this question, I was thinking like, oh, that's, this is easy, stupidity. <laughs> mm, yeah. But obviously that's not the case. No, these are smart people. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. So when you hear something mm-hmm. and it sounds good, mm-hmm. then most of the time people were like, oh, that's really cool. Let me share that with somebody I care about. Mm-hmm. Right? And so social media builds on that. Um, the people that hear something and they're skeptical, they're like, ah, that doesn't sound right. Like these people are rare. Mm-hmm. I think there's more people in the world that are um, that are kind of optimistic, wanting to believe, than there are people that are paranoid, don't believe anything they hear, you know, want to 
always be skeptical about any new idea. Like these type of people, I think, are more rare. I think people can be trained. I uh, yes, yes, you can for sure. Uh huh. Yes. That's what we call media literacy. Right okay. now, I think a lot of colleges and universities are trying to teach people that, mm. like you need to train yourself. Mm. Uh, you need to build a filter when you receive information, and uh, verify if the new information is right. How do they train you to do that? Oh, uh, I can give you an example. So, in Taiwan, people were really, really skeptical about information from China. Okay. The very beginning of the COVID nineteen outbreak, okay. and I think it's because Taiwanese people were trained. How are you trained? Like, okay. what what do you guys do? Do you remember Asian swine fever? Uh, only sort of vaguely, yeah. right? Because was this nineteen seventy four? That one, I thought. No, the no, Hong no, Kong I'm, I'm one, talking, or is this? I'm talking about the very, very recent one, the oh. twenty eighteen Asian swine fever. Don't know at all. So, okay, so some pigs got sick in okay. Africa, and okay. then um, this swine fever. Quickly spread to Europe. <clears throat> and ah, then, okay. Yeah. Yes. So um, European pigs were sick too. Yes. And then it almost stopped at Middle East because no one was eating or farming pigs there. Yeah. Uh huh. But somehow the virus traveled to Russia. Okay. And it was that time when China and the United States got engaged in the trade wars. Okay. And then in 2018, China included pork and chicken on a list of retaliatory tariffs. On U.S. dollar, sixty billion worth of American product. Mm. So no more American meat in China. And then uh, they hmm, they stopped importing meat from Canada after Meng Wanzhou was arrested, the key person in Huawei. Oh. Yeah. So uh, that key person, Meng Wanzhou, was arrested in Canada, and then. In revenge, that, yeah. yeah. In revenge, China stopped importing pork from Canada. So in 2018, huh. China stopped importing pork from Canada and the United States, two of the largest port exporters. And what happens is that Russia filled the gap. Russia filled the supply gap. They started selling pork. Yes, okay. to China. Okay. And why is pork so important? Because that was my next question. Yeah. <laughs> Why do you care about pork so much? Do you like McDonald's? <laughs> no, I don't. Yeah, sauce, oh, right. In Chinese diet, okay. pork accounts for 60% of meat consumption. Uh, okay. So pork price can lead to food inflation mm. and the inflatory expectation of consumers. Mm. So China needed to fill the gap. And then China started importing pork from Russia. Oh. And you know what? They come with the virus. Huh. And then because uh, pork or pigs are um, transported across China yeah. using trucks and vans. So the virus spread to entire China in just three months. And then Taiwan got really, really nervous because the summer of 2020 is very important to the entire Taiwan economy. So 20 years ago, 1997, there was a outbreak of foot mouth disease. So there was an outbreak of pig flu in Taiwan. Mm. And then uh, Taiwan could not export pork for 20 years. Wow. And pork, uh, export value of pork yeah. was 70 billion Taiwan dollars, 2 billion US dollars Okay. every year. Okay. So that's like 2 billion US dollars gone okay. every year for 20 years. And then finally, 20 years later, we are about to be licensed to this free export of okay. pork. So we're expecting two billion U.S. dollars every year from now on. Oh, the other countries just said, we don't want your meat. That, that's what happened. Something like that, huh? Uh, I think there's an international organization that, okay. that revoked Taiwan's wow. permission or license huh. to export por pork. Okay. Yeah, so we've been preparing for the summer of 2020 for so long. And now that there's Asian, uh, the African swine fever in China. So at that time, Taiwan tightened its border control yep. on pork product. I'm not sure if you remember that, but in um, 2019, when you arrive at the international airport, yeah. you have to you have to claim if you have any pork products or they not. They give you that card, Yeah, right? yeah. And yeah. then you have to throw away any sausage or uh -huh. 
whatever pork、huh. product you bring with you. Otherwise, you will be fined up to a million Taiwan dollars. I had no idea that's what was going on. Oh, okay. Yeah. You were just、huh. traveling with your wife, and then she asked you to hold the card. Oh,、uh, every time I come back from any country, except I guess. Yeah, there was only a few countries like U.S. They would give you the pass, you go right through.、Uh-huh. But I came back from Europe a few times, and、uh-huh. they wouldn't give me a pass. You have to wait in line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah.、Uh. So they are asking the beagles to sniff your、uh-huh. luggage and,、uh-huh. and see if you have any、uh-huh. pork product.、Uh-huh. And this is so important to Taiwan's economy.、Mm. Uh-huh. So、um, the government and the private sectors and the citizens are all very wary of it.、Um, there was a point when everyone in Taiwan. Received a self a a, a a text message saying that no more pork product from other countries.、Hmm. And then、um, I'm not sure.、Sh- uh, okay. And then at one point, people started reporting that when they、uh, receive parcels from China, like Taobao,、mm-hmm. the Chinese eBay,、mm-hmm. <clears throat> they come with some giveaways. Okay. A free sausage. So if、oh. you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So if you buy a toy、okay. for your kid、okay. on Taobao, you can、huh. receive a free sausage. And wow. Yeah. So Taiwanese people were trained to be really, really cautious and very wary of this attack. We、mm. we don't call it attack. So after that, yeah.、Um, Covid nineteen broke out in yeah. Wuhan. Yeah. So I think that was a rehearsal. Interesting. Uh-huh. But that's not very long ago then.、Mm-mm. So this is. It was just like, one year before COVID nineteen. Well, are there any other like disinformation campaigns before that? Like, did Cambridge Analytica, like, you know, in 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 the West, we had Facebook and Cambridge Analytica and all these scandals, all these political scandals. Did any of this stuff actually? This was like two thousand sixteen. Um, the swine fever was eighteen and nineteen. But was there anything before that? Like, were there disinformation campaigns that you know of earlier? Like, I would think that that China and Russia and these sorts of,、um, you know, like the the opposite of democracy countries、mm-hmm. would have looked at information war. I mean, the U.S. looks at information warfare、mm-hmm. for a long time.、Mm. Do you know of any sort of instances of information warfare before? We call it cyber sending warfare. Sending you sausage. <laughs> <laughs> you know that they have a new tactic these days. Okay. They are sending seeds. Seeds. Soul, yeah, and soil samples. Wow. To Taiwan and the United States and the UK, people are reporting that they are receiving anonymous parcels. This is from China, or just from around the world. China. Huh.、Mm. Uh, going back to your last question, we didn't call it information warfare. We call it cyber warfare. Yeah. Yeah. At least、um, that's what happened when I was working for the military. But that's more like hacking. Yeah. And stealing right. things, right? Right. Right. Yeah. Right. No, I'm I'm talking specifically about f- fake news. Uh huh. Right. That.、Um, There's always fake news spreading before elections. Elections. Okay. Yeah. I、mm. don't remember specific examples right now,、mm. but I do have the impression. How did Taiwan protect? Against this sort of stuff previously, I don't remember.、Huh. Like now, I mean, there's this huge campaign going on, all, like all kinds of things. Like, like I, I mean, I even see it. Like it spills over to some. I can't read Chinese, but I know, like what Audrey Tang is doing and what all these people are doing to try、uh-huh. to figure out. Okay, how do you use social media? How do you use memes? How do、right. you use these things to, to, counteract that?、Mm-hmm. Mm. But it's very new. It is very new. Yeah. I think,、huh. And I think we learn from experiences.、Hmm. I didn't know about the whole sending a sausage <laughs> in the mail. That's <laughs> it's very dangerous because you're not、one. you're not supposed to dispose them. Uh, uh, you you're not supposed to dispose them in your trash can because they can go to your sewage system and still sure、um, affect sure pig farms.、Hmm. Mm. Wow. The seeds too. So, according to what I read from one of the U.S. government agency website, I think、okay. it's the Department of Agriculture. Yeah, yeah. They are asking people to send these parcels and packages to their offices, so they、oh. can burn them. Oh.、Uh-huh. 
some people actually want to plant them in their backyard. See, this is really different sort of kind of fake news and disinformation. I mean, this is still using like um, the real world. Mm -hmm. uh, the Online and offline. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Huh. So, yeah. So, like, talk a bit about how Taiwan, like, what sort of systems do you use? Like, if you got something on Facebook, like, let's say, for example, my dad called you and he said, hey, like, <laughs> does holding your breath for 10 minutes um, or 10 seconds, 10 minutes would be amazing if you could do it, by the way. <laughs> um, if you can hold your breath for 10 seconds, uh, do you have COVID? Like, where would you go? What, like, how would you figure that out, if that's true or not? Oh, I'll Google it. And then I'm sure some people would say this is fake news. You just Google. You, you, there, there's nothing sort of more Taiwanese than Google, huh? Uh, okay, so there's a website that's called G Zero V. So it looks okay. like golf, but yeah. it's Gov not. Zero. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, I didn't know it's called. I'm a Gov huge Zero. fan. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So they have a specific web page. Oh, really? Oh, uh, for ah. clarifying all of the fake news, but they make sure that all of this can be found on Google. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. So, so you would type it in Chinese, and then it probably would end Redirect up at Gov Zero. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Ah. Mm -hmm. So they're doing all of like the search engine optimization, all of the tricks that you'd need to get content out there, huh? Mm -hmm. huh. Mm. Mm. Interesting. I think chatbots are really convenient. Oh, by the way, the chatbots are using database supported by Gov02. Where are these chatbots? Uh, Line, I mean. People yeah. are using Line is the most popular instant messaging app in yeah. Taiwan, and then so so you put chatbots into your group. Oh, really? Uh huh. And then what's this this chatbot? Okay, is so like? my mom has a group. Okay. And I'm the only one under fifty in okay. that group. Okay. Okay. And the reason why I sneaked into that group is okay. because I want to make sure that they don't spread misinformation. Okay. Because there's so much fake news spreading. Yeah. And then. What you can do is you can invite a new member into your group. Okay. And then the new member is called Mei Yu Yi. That's okay. the name of the bot. Okay. And it, the name looks like some kind of ant that you okay. know. Okay. So she, an old lady, is invited to the group and she's actually a bot. Wow. And then if someone says that something that's not true, she will come out and say, hold on, this is verified really? fake news. Yeah. And I mean, is does it work? Like, does it actually catch fake news? Mm -hmm. It's good. Mm -hmm. Verified fake news. Really? Yeah. So I think the chatbot is connected to the Gov Zero, Gov Zero yeah. database. So if it's too new, maybe she needs some time. Okay. Uh huh. So then, like, is there a way that if you think something is fake, you can say, "Hey, you know, to the ante, can you look this up and see if this is fake?" I'm not sure. <laughs> I can play with it. Because that would be cool. Yeah. <laughs> I can play with it. Uh -huh. Wow. So within the chat. Th there's a specific line channel. Okay. So if you see something suspicious, okay. just copy the link and then paste it to that channel. And mm. then they will get back to you. So Whoa. it's like a report system. Huh. It's a verification and a report system. And this is new. Like this is all within it's, the last. No, no. I think it's three, at least three years old. Two or three years huh. old. And who is making this stuff? You say Gov Zero. Is, are they the only ones or is there more? Uh, there are more. I'm not saying that Gov Zero is making it. I'm yeah. just saying that I think that the chatbot is connected to their database. Okay, but I'm it. not sure who made it. Huh. Some white hat hacker, maybe. Yeah. Bots haven't really taken off in the West. Like, I felt for a long time that so much of what we do would just be replaced with chatbots in messaging apps. Uh -huh. And I think this was like 10 years ago. I was like, this is absolutely the future. It's going to happen super fast. Like, I'm tired of all these apps. I have like 20 apps on my phone. Mm -hmm. Why don't they just connect into messaging? And there's something about there's something about Western messaging that has never actually embraced this, whereas like WeChat. Why? I mean, oh, don't embrace WeChat. No, I mean, <laughs> but I mean, there's like applications and all kinds okay, of things you can yeah. install. Like, like there was a WeChat app that I had one time where you could, um, 
you could take a picture of a plant and it would tell you what plant that is. Oh, okay. Yeah, I thought that was really cool. Uh-huh. Because it's like, yeah, it's like these messaging platforms became uh, commerce platforms. Like they became social. Okay. Like, so no one is using it for the public good? I don't think so. Yeah, and then in, in in the West, it's like, I mean, uh, you know, we we had Snapchat, um, but it's a different purpose, you know. And Twitter and Facebook, like Twitter had bots. I mean, there's there's millions of bot accounts, but they're really just doing dumb stuff. They're trying to fool people. Uh-huh. They're trying to, um, yeah, f- like mainly they're trying to fool people. Like I I feel like the innovation in Western social media has been around how do you disinform, not like how do you correct. Do you think if one developer comes up with a, ch- a bot like this on Twitter to clarify fake news, mm-hmm. um, this person or this app or mm-hmm. this bot can be supported by the government? No, they wouldn't do it, that's for sure. Okay. I mean, especially if the president... Uh. Um, <laughs> 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 All right, let me not... Yeah. That's um, okay. <laughs> Like, you can talk about it, and then I'll try not to roll well, my. Let's eyes. just say the press secretary, right? So she said something a couple, I think it was a week or two weeks ago, that just, like, just saw it. I wanted to just go choke her, right? <laughs> um, that. What uh, was that? Oh, oh, oh! She said, um, it was, uh, um, science should not stand in the way of schools reopening. Oh, okay, okay. Right? Yeah. And so there's this, um. Yeah, like the my preferred method for combating fake news for um, these urban legends, of course, is scientific method. Right? Uh-huh. Like I think that's like that's the most sort of like underappreciated right. invention that humans have ever created. Mm-hmm. Right, and um, but yeah, so like the whole government, and it's not like I probably really shouldn't even bag on the press secretary because both parties are extremely active in this disinformation. Uh-huh. They just do it from different angles for different stories. Um, in many ways right now, the left is um, is even worse on social media with things than the right. right. And so, but we don't have, I'm not aware of any bots. Like I use Twitter a lot. I really love Twitter. Mm-hmm. Um, I hate Facebook, you know that, right? But yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so yeah. what makes the difference? Why do you like Twitter and ah. not Facebook? Well, at the end of the day, in Twitter, I have a collection of people that I follow, and I have a stream of information that at least I think I control, in the sense that um, it's ordered by time, uh-huh. not some algorithm. Oh, like okay. if if Twitter started to order this based on an algorithm, then I'd be like, okay, well, whose algorithm? Mm-hmm. What are the incentives of that algorithm? Mm-hmm. Why do they want me to read that instead of that? Mm-hmm. And and within just a few moments, I'd be like, oh, this is horrible. I'm I'm done, mm-hmm. right? Um, Facebook like fully embraced algorithmic newsfeed. Mm-hmm. Like that to them was an innovation. That to them was fantastic. Yeah, it's a money machine. It's a money machine. And that to me is like the single source of corruption right now that's destroying American democracy. I know. Not not only American democracy. I think Just every, democracy, period. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. And it's doing it because like your data is what's making it smart. Right. Well, well smart. It's uh-huh. it's not smart. It's actually just sneaky. Horrible. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's your data that's giving it the power. And um, it doesn't seem that there are any good tools or any good ways for individual people to combat that. Mm -hmm. And the political parties really don't seem to want to do anything. And I think because... Like they both use these platforms to mm-hmm. talk to people because yeah. this is how you talk to people nowadays. Mm-hmm. Like people are on social media, politicians have to go to the people. So you have this sort of vicious cycle where the politicians don't actually want to regulate this, I think, mm-hmm. because they're not sure 
if after it's regulated, it's better for them or worse for them. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of about incentives. Uh -huh. Like the incentive right now for almost everybody, of course, except us people, is that, hey, let's not regulate Facebook. Let's not regulate Twitter. Let's not regulate these tech companies uh -huh. because um, the people that know how to use them for disinformation uh, have no incentive to do so. It's a really hopeless situation. Like I wish that um, that people understood bots, what they could do. Um, I mean, you, I don't even think you could do a bot. Tech, I don't think you could technically do a bot in um, Facebook Messenger that tried to um, uh, catch disinformation. I mean, that would be interesting if you could. I don't know. And like, if, if you did we it, would people ask. even care? Uh -huh. Yeah, like, would people even care, though? You know what I mean? It's like, like I don't even think people care. Like, there, there was an article that I read yesterday um, by the woman that broke the, the Cambridge Analytica story. Uh -huh. And so she was looking back at, okay, it's been four years now since the story has broke. What has been done? Nothing. Nothing. Yeah, like nothing, like absolutely nothing. Nobody's accountable. Nobody went to jail. Um, nobody even lost their job, really. So I, I've been thinking about this. Okay. I've been thinking about the relationship between social media and democracy. And okay. I think that social media um, is eating up our democracy. Yeah. I don't think there are media now. Uh, they're not app companies. They're just one big capitalist group. Yeah. Uh -huh. But Taiwan seems to be doing okay. Like, you seem to be resisting the, like, how would you say Taiwan's relationship to, say, Facebook? Like, Facebook as Taiwan in social has media. has the highest penetration rate. Yeah, by far. Yeah. 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 But, like. Almost but, everyone in Taiwan except you is on Facebook. I know. <laughs> I know. Like, like there, was, there was one time um, last year. Uh -huh. I mean, you. You know this. So I was trying to work on an app to help people escape from Facebook. Yeah. Okay. And um, I've never told this story before Spring. publicly. Yes, okay. exactly. Um, it pretty much destroyed Bitmark as a company because uh, I could not convince my own team that we've got to get away from Facebook. Now, uh, like I know they want to get away from Facebook because like if you ask them, hey, are there these problems? They, of course, acknowledge these, these are these problems, but um, but they didn't think, A, it would be possible to solve, and B, um, they wouldn't even start from their self. Like, if you don't use your own product, like, if you don't think your product is great, like, this works for me, mm -hmm. how, like, how is it possible to convince somebody else your product is great? Like, if, if you don't use it yourself. Like, that's that's kind of my, like, I try to solve a problem that I think solves my own problem. But they can use Facebook and Spring at the same time, right? Uh, that was my compromise. Oh, like okay. my original plan was no, you're done. Like get out of there, escape. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you were asking your staff escape to escape with your data. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And there was such resistance internally. Uh -huh. And to me, it was like it's like don't you see it? Like this is destroying so much that's amazing about humanity. Yeah. Uh. So my question is why people are so willingly giving up their privacy or their personal data in exchange for shiny treats of for entertainment. What? Yeah, in exchange for what? Um, like, what do you get out <laughs> of using Facebook? <laughs> That's a very good question because I deleted Facebook app. But I'm still on Facebook. I'm just using the Safari version, the web page version. Okay. I, I just hoping that it doesn't listen to my everyday conversation so much. Um, and also, I don't want to be interrupted by Facebook notifications all the time. So yeah. I deleted it yeah. um, only two weeks ago. And what I'm looking for, uh, entertainment for sure. Okay. And sometimes connections. Okay. Uh -huh. and, and sometimes it's really important to remind people that I'm still in the business. Yeah. Like, I mean, my clients. And, yeah. But that's debatable because yeah. I don't think that a brand can only survive um, when, it's, uh, when it's maintaining its active presence on social media. Mm. I'm testing it. 
right now. Oh, really? Now. <laughs> I mean, there's, it really seems like there's getting less and less options. Like, you're either on social media or you don't exist. Like, uh, is that true? I don't know. It seems like it, though. Yeah, but I watched a TED Talk um, this week. Um, the speaker is a engineer and a developer. Mm -hmm. And then he's suggesting that social media platforms provide an option or a choice. So he was using a switch image to show people that right now you're either turning it on or off. When you're on, you get connections and you are also distracted all the time. Okay. And then when you switch it off, you want some moments of concentration, but you're also um, experiencing some fear of missing out. Sure. Uh -huh. Or you think that you're sending yourself into some hermit mode. Mm -hmm. But um, instead of this either on or off choices, there can be something more. Like, what if I want to be alive on social media, but I'm asking for five minutes of focus mm -hmm. or two hours of focus mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Is it possible? So he's not saying that, oh, we should do this. He's just yeah. proposing a different way of thinking it. Yeah. I mean, the, the fake news and sort of the scale of the problem is in many ways so... Like if we go back to the very, very beginning with this insurance person um, that wants to know, hey, what's so bad about insurance? Uh -huh. I think like in my ear, there's somebody saying, hey, what's so bad about social media, right? Oh. And um, because like you said, like there, there is a need. We do have a need to connect, right? We do have a need to share things with people we care about, mm -hmm. right? And but the problem is that these platforms, because they are so centralized, because there's only a few companies that control everything, and mm -hmm. these companies are not accountable to anyone, right. the governments are unable to regulate them, that, that, that these companies end up just trying to optimize making money mm -hmm. right, at all costs. It doesn't matter if it's good for society or not. Like it's good for the company, the company grows, therefore it's good, mm -hmm. right? Like that's, that's just how this works, right? Like um, in the extreme, these companies become just sociopaths because of the incentives, right? So, so th the incentives of the companies that create or that not create, that run the big social media platforms um, lead them to make it easier to spread disinformation. The incentives of governments uh, end up sometimes looking like, hey, let's just spread disinformation because if we can create confusion, like like in a democracy, democracy is messy. That's just how it is. Mm -hmm. That's, I mean, I, I pe agree. people have freedom, right? And freedom looks messy mm -hmm. from the outside. Mm -hmm. And so if you can make it look more messy, then if you're a non-democratic country, mm -hmm. um, then you can tell your people that, hey, uh, you don't want a democracy. Look at that shit. Like, look at what America's doing. It's horrible. You don't want that. Yeah. Right? And there's a lot of truth to that. Like, it, it really is messy. Like, it really looks terrible. Mm -hmm. And so there's massive incentives, I think at least, that the moment you find a way to create disinformation that um, that is cheap, that can push your message, and you're just going to use it. Like, you're just going to use it again and again and again and again. Until you polarize everyone. I don't know. I mean, the uh, like, I I don't know how these tools that allow for people to be able to stop the or people to be able to combat the disinformation. Like, I don't know how these can come about in the West. But do you think disinformation is so much a problem on Twitter? Yeah, Twitter's bad. Um, Twitter is really bad. Twitter, I mean, the, 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 the reason Twitter is better, less bad than um, Facebook. Facebook is, again, it goes down to this algorithm. Okay. That, that there's less harm Twitter can do because if they started to 
do the algorithm on your Twitter feed, people freak out. Like they've tried this so many times. Like, oh, oh yeah, yeah. Every couple of years, they're like, oh, we're going to start showing you, uh-huh. um, uh, what do they call this? It's just nonsense. Like they say, oh, we're going to, you know, we're going to give you a curated stream. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. Like they, they, they've they tried to push this like every couple of years. And it's uh-huh. just the people that care about Twitter, they're like, no way am I going to take this. And so, so because... Because of that, you get information and you have to process it yourself. Now, now Twitter's main problem, I think at least, is that, um, again, negative information and all that kind of stuff, it just shares faster, it propagates faster, um, and it's extremely hard to follow any good conversations on Twitter. Yeah. Yeah. Uh Extremely hard. It is. It is. Uh Facebook is just completely geared towards... um, how do you game the algorithm to get into somebody's feed? Mm-hmm. Because the moment you're in their feed, then it's going to be shared. And right. so the incentives are just too high. So I was thinking the other day that uh, Facebook was founded in 2004. Mm, and okay. then it replaced MySpace yeah. in three years. Yeah. So it's about time that it's being replaced. I'm hoping that someone will create a Facebook alternative. Because uh-huh. uh, I think that these companies have a lifespan of just no more than two decades. Yeah. You know, um, I wish that were true. The, if that's the case, yeah. where do you think the new alternative should look like? Mm, okay, okay. Because I'm thinking that what kind of business, business model they should adopt. Yeah. There should be a revolution. Yeah. Uh-huh. And then, so there will be a new way for people to be connected online, yeah, yeah. for people to share information, and then for the company to make money yeah. so they can outgrow Facebook. Yeah. I don't know. Um, so outside of some regulation, mm-hmm. um, like... These companies, they're supposed to give you your data if you ask for it. They're supposed to tell you what data they have on you. They're supposed to tell you how um, that data is used, how it's processed. Like, they're supposed to do all this, but they don't. And so... What happens if they publicize all that? Are they going to be killed? (laughs) um, I don't mean physically, I mean in business. uh, I think if they actually did that, then... um, then alternatives could emerge. Other startups could come forth with better models of doing that. Um, Governments could experiment with their own communication products. Um, I mean, the whole GovZero effort is really interesting because it's sort of coming from the bottom. Um, It feels like at least the Taiwan government is like, okay, we're gonna gonna run with this. Like, Uh we're gonna try to connect them. Uh And... um, in America, things almost always start from the bottom, like, okay. and so that's great. It, it is great, yeah. like, but I still don't see the path, like, I still don't see the path that that would allow social media to be disrupted from the bottom. Because according to Shoshana Zuboff, yeah. yeah, in the interview, she cited a leaked document. Okay, um, it's from Australia, and New Zealand. Okay. So Facebook is telling advertisers that now we have emotional behavioral signals of yeah. users. Yeah. So these are used for predictions. And then we are providing that insight or intelligence to you so you can advertise more specifically. Yeah. It's yeah. called targeted ads. So, mm. so um, if everyone on Facebook is aware of the fact that it's not only listening to our conversation and mm-hmm. it's also taking other intangible information mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. they know our emotions and how our emotions are going to trigger our behaviors, yeah. including your shopping decisions or your folding behavior, then I think that in the past, in the history of humanity, people would start burning their doc- burning their buildings mm-hmm. and then mm-hmm. like throwing X onto the walls and asking someone to step down and then there will be a revolution. Yeah. But right now no one's doing it. No. I, I mean, I 
I think in many ways because they're doing it in other areas of society. So they're doing it um, with uh, things like Black Lives Matter in the U.S. Okay. So there's other areas of society. Um, uh, I think the economic stuff will come next. And I guess like if I did have any hope, it would be that um, – that people would begin to realize that social media plays a very, very strong role here. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I, I would love for more information about how, um, like, how the government of Taiwan used GovZero, how GovZero solved a problem for the citizens, how these bots got into regular conversations. Uh -huh. Because, like, when I hold my smartphone like in my hands and I'm using an app, whoever makes that app, if it's a big enough company, has a whole team of data scientists figuring out, okay, how can I get Sean to use this app for more time? Right. Okay. Now, each person needs our own AI. Like we need like, like Iron Man where we have like, you know, our own, um, what's the... I don't know. Jarvis. Jarvis, there we go. <laughs> so each of us need a Jarvis, uh -huh. right? Uh -huh. and, um, and if we had a Jarvis, then when this kind of disinformation came at us, uh -huh. like you said, right, it's fairly easy to Google this stuff yeah. um, if you want to invest the time. Mm -hmm. But like throughout the whole day, I mean, I don't know about you, but like, I'm focused on the things that really matter to me. And it's not, hey, is my mom sharing fake news, right? Like, it just doesn't matter to me that much. Uh -huh. But it should, uh -huh. right? And, like, if it was easy enough, like, if Jarvis would come in and say, hey, wait. Your mom your is mom's spreading <laughs> this information. <laughs> yeah, and, 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 then, and if my dad was going to share this 10-second thing uh -huh. and right away, uh -huh. like, something jumped in. So, uh -huh. so I, I, think, um, I think the hope is to make social media not look like social media in the sense of like each of us have our own AI that's defending us, that is, um, that is collectively allowing us to combat these platforms uh -huh. that have their own data scientists that are working to spread the fake news. Because make no mistake, I mean, these, these big social media platforms, they love fake news. It's their business model. Oh, that's the worst part. No, I think that's actually very hopeful. Like, why, why is like that? Like, the fact that Taiwan is able to, to w with um, first, I guess, this swine flu thing, but then with COVID-19, uh -huh. the fact that people here, like, the fact that in your mom's group, uh -huh. over 50, uh -huh. that they're open-minded enough to put a bot in there, and the bot is going to catch the not, fake they news. They were not. I, I oh, was you put it in. <laughs> so the fact that you knew you could do this, uh -huh. to me, that's awesome. Oh. And so, so let's, let's spread that. Uh-huh. Like, I mean, I think that's the solution. Oh, great. I, I do, I do, I do. Okay. I do, I do. I, I think, like... We managed to come up with <laughs> some like, hope. I think it's a huge hope. Like, uh -huh. like uh, go try to figure out uh -huh. why isn't that on Facebook. Like, why don't you have something Actually, in Facebook right now? Um, this is what Girls in Tech can do. Okay. Yeah, we can have our next hackathon. Okay. On building bots to stop misinformation. Okay. On Twitter, on, on Facebook. Uh, yeah, we can start with Facebook. Because uh, I don't think... I don't think there are a lot of people using Twitter in Taiwan. But yeah, anyways, that's true. anyways, um, let's not limit ourselves. Yeah. So yeah, that's something we can think about. So cool. for our next hackathon, cool. yeah, we can ask people to in we can invite people. And you know what? A lot of people from Gov Zero come to our hackathons. Interesting. Yeah. It's it's not so much the bot. It's that we need like a, an agent, like an AI. We need that same power mm -hmm. that Facebook has. Mm -hmm. oh. Okay. Coming to us, like protecting us, uh -huh. like protecting us people. Like we need this kind of thing. Yeah. Do you remember a um, Apple commercial, Apple against IBM? Of course. Yeah. The girls. Best throw commercial it. ever. Yeah. 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 So what I'm picturing yeah. is something like that. Yeah. A small startup. Yeah. Would overthrow Facebook in three years. It's yeah. about time. It's been alive for almost 20 years. So mm. I think. 
Cool. Soon enough,、um, it's gonna be replaced. My fingers are crossed. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you can come to our next hackathon. I'll be there. Yeah. <laughs> Let's do it. Okay. <laughs> so、um, that's about it. Okay. For today's show. Yeah. Uh huh. We talked a lot about how social media can undermine our democracy and our economy. Yeah. Uh、mm-hmm. huh. We we are open for criticisms and comments and debate. Yeah, and please give us.、Um, More feedback,、mm-hmm. um, you know, help us to figure out what's the most interesting for. Yeah, and then in the next episode, we're going to talk more about possible solutions. Okay, sounds good.、Uh-huh. Let's do that. Yay! See you、okay. next time. Bye bye.